Thanks very much for that. First, I do want to acknowledge that we are meeting um, on Yungar land and pay tribute to the elders, both past and present. I also want to acknowledge the traditional owners of the land on where fracking is going to be occurring, which is quite extensive. Um, thank you very much for coming today. Just to give you a little bit of a breakdown on what's actually happening, um, I'm about to go in and, and uh, wrap up our motion on uranium mining. And so I do know that simultaneously we actually have a rally around uranium that's occurring and people are making their way up. But today uh, I will finally commence the uh, debate uh, around my motion seeking a moratorium on the practice of fracking within WA until such time as we have an appropriate regulatory regime which can achieve a range of particular outcomes, ensuring that we don't actually lose agricultural land and that we can actually ensure that we have a series of environmental protections because at the moment we simply don't have that. The bulk of that uh, will actually be occurring in two weeks' time, the debate, uh, and, to, and in the week after that. So that gives you a bit of an idea of what's actually happening today. But one of the things I did want to draw to your attention, it's very interesting to turn up to Parliament today and come into my office because there's a big envelope there. And I want to show you, and what I found on my desk was a letter from APIA. Of course, um, the Australian Petroleum Production and Exploration Association, uh, which is the main body which represents those organisations that are seeking to frack unconventional gas within Western Australia. And in this is a letter to, that's obviously gone to every member of parliament imploring people not to support my motion, but not to support the Honourable Alison Zamon's motion on a moratorium. So they're obviously a little bit concerned um, to actually go that far. And I, was, uh, and I also note that they also attached a lovely glossy brochure telling us about how wonderful unconventional gas is uh, for the future of Western Australia. So there's certainly a lot of money going into this industry and the certainly industry is prepared to, look, to do all it can uh, to actually lobby to ensure that this industry goes ahead. Now why we should be particularly concerned is because we really are at the first stages of uh, this industry in WA. There have actually been only six fracks which have occurred for uh, unconventional gas. But what we do know is that where it's taken off around the world it has happened exponentially, resulting in a matter of five years, ten years, thousands and thousands of wells which suddenly pop up. So we know that if we are going to see this industry expand, we need to get the regulatory regime in place for it right now. The risks around fracking are well known. We know that it uses a huge amount of water, particularly concerning uh, around our Eniaba region, which is where the industry is the most developed, because farmers need that water, and at the moment they, it looks like they're going to be losing it for these operations. There's obviously issues around contamination of water sources as well, through the failure of, of well casings or the like. So the problem there is that we could actually look at our aquifers becoming contaminated, but also there's concern about groundwater, about surface water contamination as well through spills through the regurgitated fr fracking fluid. There is concern also about the chemicals which are needed in order to uh, undertake a frack. We know that we don't know uh, the, the long-term the health impacts of the majority of chemicals which are found to be used um, in these, um, in these frac fracking operations and they raise real concerns as well. And there's absolutely no transparency as well. All efforts that I've made to try to get this information publicly available, which you would think should be made publicly available, have been completely denied on the grounds that it's commercial in confidence. What this means in practice is that material data sheets, which is by law has to be made available for workers at the site of any wellhead, has been refused to be tabled in Parliament, not publicly available. Farmers who have had no choice when, they, when it comes to these wells coming on their land have no way to find out exactly what chemicals are being pumped into the ground. This arrangement is simply one that occurs between the Department of Mines and Petroleum and the company itself with absolutely no transparency and that's absolutely unacceptable. What we've also seen around the world is that there are issues at the wellhead with uh, localised air contamination and so this is a very real concern and one that we need to be aware of. And of course we know that there are concerns that have occurred uh, globally around increased levels of seismic activity as a result of fracking operations so that's something to be very mindful of. Now one of the arguments that keeps being put forward by government as to why we need to look at an urgent expansion of this industry is they look at they talk about unconventional gas as being a transition fuel uh, in, in, a, in a climate change environment. Well the reality is that the studies have shown 
that some studies have shown that, it, that, it's, that it's potentially uh, twice as greenhouse intent, uh, intense as coal. But there are conflicting studies. But what, the, what we certainly know is that unconventional gas, at the very least, looks to have the same level of greenhouse intensity as coal. So whichever way you look at it, this is not a transition gas. This is not something that we should, we should be looking at as a solution to climate change. So, and, and, and at the moment, it's pretty much a pretty, it's an, it's an unnecessary diversion away from what we know is necessary in terms of renewable fuels. I will say as well, there's ongoing concern. We've seen this particularly over, over east with the increasing encroachment onto farmland. And also here, there's a concern about the encroachment onto traditional lands, particularly in the Canning Basin. What this has meant is that farmers will often find themselves with a crisscross of unconventional gas rigs on their land, which obviously interferes quite significantly with their capacity to be able to farm. Now, this is something that's very real. It requires an enormous amount of clearing and something that, that certainly farmers and particularly the West Australian Farmers Federation are becoming increasingly concerned about. And I suppose what I really want to point out is how appalling the Environmental Protection Agency is. What a disgrace. Utterly missing in action on this. There is a memorandum of understanding that exists between the DMP and the EPA, which actually compels the DMP to automatically refer to the EPA uh, when certain fracking activities under are undertaken. Not all fracking activities, but certain ones. And yet what we know is that when Wadada Deep was fracked, which is only 500 metres away from a wetland, it was and, and actually fell with in an automatic referral under the terms of the MOU, it was never referred. When I met with the EPA last year, I think it was about June, I sat down with them and basically talked about the concerns around the expansion of the fracking industry. They thanked me for bringing to their attention the fact that fracking was occurring. They had not even known that it was occurring. And yet since then, what has been their response? Their response has been a refusal to assess any fracking operations. I have personally referred four fracking, proposed fracking operations to the EPA and every single time they have refused to assess it on the basis that the industry is not yet expanded enough. My response to that is now is the time to actually be investigating. Now is the time to make sure that we've actually got it right. You would have thought as the Environmental Protection Agency that they would be keen to protect the environment by ensuring that we have a regime in place now to deal with what is going to be thousands of wells across the West Australian landscape. But no, completely missing in action. My question to Paul Vogel then, the head of the EPA, is how many wells is it going to take before you do your job and you actually start looking at what is needed with these wells now? We need to look at the regulatory regime now. We can't be guaranteed that we have an appropriate regime now. The Hunter Report, which was the independent investigation into this regulatory regime, identified a whole series of holes. Most importantly, the fact that even the environmental, um, the environmental management plans, which are formulated by the companies, are not able to be legally enforced in any way. We have a long way to go on this. It is a desperately under-regulated industry. Now is the time to do it. The EPAs are missing in action and it's totally inappropriate to leave it up to the DMP to be managing this. You know why? Because DMP's job is to rip as much stuff out of the ground as they possibly can. That's their job and that's why we're supposed to have independent regulators that monitor their activity and regulate that activity and yet they are completely missing. I want to say finally we are seeing finally, uh, even though I put this motion in 14 months ago, um, that we are getting increased community awareness around the risks that are associated with fracking. I would like to say that it, I was welcomed last year, uh, last week, sorry, the decision by the Carnamar Council to, to um, without, to unanimously support my motion uh, seeking a moratorium on fracking. That was a really welcome, um, a welcome announcement, particularly as that area is an area which is most affected by this. So we're also seeing that increasingly there are concerns with communities around Eniaba, certainly in the southwest, and there have been concerns from traditional owners up in the Canning Basin as well. So my response, my, I want to thank you for coming along today. Certainly the bulk of the, um, the debate will be occurring in two weeks' time and then the week after that. But it is really important that we show this government and we show our regulators we expect them to lift their game. If this industry is going to go, to he go ahead the way that, they, that it's envisaged, it's not a solution to climate change. Uh, we, and we certainly need to make sure that we're doing everything possible to stop the risks associated with it. Thank you. Thank you, Alison.
Now, Alison's got a very busy day today, and um, I really want to thank you for taking the time to speak to us. Now, next we're going to hear from independent candidate Julie Newman, who's running against Terry Redman, who's the Minister for Agriculture. Um, yes, um, Julie Newman has taken a very strong stand against unconventional gas in Western Australia, and um, yeah, it's, uh, um, it's great we get to hear from her today. Thank you, Julie. Thank you. Anybody in their right mind would be opposing fracking because what you're doing is pumping about five million litres of water about two and a half kilometres down uh, in farmland that farmers don't want them there, that mixing a whole heap of chemicals, bringing it back up, sitting it on the ground uh, and, and polluting the environment and letting that leach into the water table which is just above the Perth Basin. Now, anybody in their right mind would be against it. So you need to look at why it's being pushed, why spineless politicians are, 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 are not, go, even though they know the concerns, why they're actually going to be opposition on the motion that's going to be pushed. And that's because the International Energy Agency, which is pushed by the big corporations through the OECD, um, is trying to push to release um, as much of Australian resources for exploitation as quickly as possible to try and keep the price of energy low. And that's the drive internationally. And if you look at that, the, the policy that's just being pushed through federally is exactly what the International Energy Agency wanted, and that's to push... They identify fracking as a really serious issue. And um, their, their solution to it is to um, try and restrict any regulation on it. And that's exactly what's happening. So you've got big business dictating the policies and spineless politicians just going for the economic flow that big business is supposedly going to produce. And that is not good governance. That is to totally negligent and we should not accept that from our politicians. Thank you. Thank you very much, Julie. Next, we're going to hear from Dr. Greg Blazov, who's from an organisation called Docs Doctors for the Environment. Yes, when, when, when fracking happens,